Hello, it's Krendis, and I'm back with Tyranny. Uh, I'm also kind of sick, but that hopefully will, shouldn't interfere with too much. I don't know. Uh, we'll see if it does, but I really wanted to get back to Tyranny. Like, I had the intention of jumping back into Tyranny after I was done with work, and that was two days ago, but as it would happen, I got sick during work, so that turned out to not be so great. Now... With that said, I have been feeling a bit better, so I just wanted to get back into this. I thought about doing a different recording format, but upon doing a like, I mean, upon playing this for like literally five seconds or maybe five minutes or something like that, I didn't really move from the spot. Um, what I was gonna do is I was gonna just do like a recording of gameplay and then just add like a voice a voiceover track of me doing basically commentary over it. Um, but I felt like that would just be really awkward. And also, just for immediately, I found that I've played a lot more... I don't want to say a lot more relaxedly, because I, I, I like to think that I'd, I would play a lot more... I mean, I would play relaxed while doing it this way, but it just felt... It felt strange, honestly. So, um, when I was doing that, the first thing I noticed was that I have this thing called a Sigil of Force. I have no idea what this is. It seems like it's a Sigil of Force, right? But you could combine it with uh, Sigil of the Guarded Form to create haste, which I will be doing and putting haste on myself. And I like my spell assortment right now, so... Hmm... I'm trying to think of like how many times I used it. I used um, false pit, and it actually saved me because it it knocks people down, but its knockdown seems to last like like a MOBA knockdown, except worse than that. Which is to say, they get up pretty much. They, I mean, it's basically like a short duration stun. So I I'm gonna I think I'll keep hasting for now. I mean, it might be useful to, what, two, two meters, four meters, so they're both basically melee range, searing palm, melee range. Um, okay, great. I do want to actually make these, make, what is this? Concussive bolt. Bombard a target, bombard a distant target with concussive forces, the force of the impact dazes and interrupts. Yeah, see, this is what I kind of use False Pit for, honestly. For Are you kidding me? Wow, this applies days for 14 seconds. That's huge. And it's a base... I mean, it's base time is 12 seconds, so I have 14 because my resolve is high, I presume. Dazed. Oh, my God. That seems really good if it gets off. Do you have high resolve? Not higher than me. 17, 15, 14. Okay. I mean, it's, it's decent enough. It's also a really easy spell to cast. So... Where? Oh, yeah. This. This. That. This is ranged? It's kind of ranged. Yeah, I mean, it's basically ranged. So, Spectral Blur seems nice. What I do want to do, actually, and this is why I was here, is I need to get rid of all melee range spells on Lantry. I mean, Titan's Touch is fine. Kind of. Not really, but kind of. Because I don't need Lantry actually moving in to cast um, Touch of Atrophy, for example, on an enemy. Uh, that's, as we found out in the previous episode, that was, that was terrible. Mirror image on land tree could be kind of useful. Although maybe that might be better on someone that can actually dodge, so... Nobody here? Also it requires Hell of Lords, so I can't really do that anyways. Are you serious? Oh, bar Barrack's lore is almost as good as Lantry's. That's interesting. Is it because he's wounded? Because I could have sworn Lantry had a lore skill that almost rivals my own. I could be making that up. 
It's been a few days since I played this game. Touch of atrophy, I can increase to four meters. I'm not, that's not that useful. I could, I could empower it, which I might as well do. Requires 15, 15. I thought the game froze there for a second, but it did not. So I can't actually make I mean, if I remove this, I can't remake it. Oh, I mean, that's okay, because I don't really want to remove that one anyways. Permafrost. Allied target. What? Interesting. So, it has a benefit and a non-benefit. We could give him this. What if, what if we empower it? 40, right on target. And that, that brings it from 8 range to 10, or we could make it stronger. But then that that exceeds the lower, uh, the lower requirement. Oh wait, we can't, never mind, I don't know what I was thinking. Frozen grass, 2 meters, not gonna give him that, sorry. I think false pit actually might do it. Sweet, yep, there we go. False pet, definitely for you. Okay. What, what else do we have? Nothing up here. Oh, here we go. Lantry, one talent point on spent. What do we give him, though? Control Vigor could be kind of cool, because, like, Touch of Might is one... I mean, that's a Vigor spell. Or gifted healer. I I I'm going with gifted healer. He's kind of our healer, so let's make his heal spells better. What what is this quill thing? Quill strike. Lantry throws a well aimed quill at his target, interrupting them. Quill flurry. Lantry rapidly attacks his target with a series of thrown with a series of thrown strikes. Okay. Settle throw. Well, stealth, Lantry uh, receives a significant bonus to uh, range damage. That's interesting. Quill Storm, launch a hail of quills at multiple enemies at a target. I mean, in an area. Each quill applies a bleeding affliction when it strikes. Okay. And he doesn't, he doesn't even have the baseline sage talent. That's interesting. Uh, I apologize if you hear the um, cough drops because um, I need to be doing that. Oh, second breath is pretty cool. Passage of Horus. What, what is your renewal ability? Oh, that's what that is. Okay, well, I don't really care too much about that. Gifted Healer it is. Yep, I'm sure. How do we level you up? I don't know. You have one point. Um, I'm actually going to give him a health point. Yeah. Because people love to kill him. And it's good to have him not die. Okay. So, I guess let's get right into it. Lantry is wounded twice, I believe. Yes. Where can I see his wounds? Oh, four times, actually. And I wounded twice. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Um, especially since this looks like a pretty hard fight in front of us. We got a Sage Apprentice here. We got an Archer. They hit hard, but we should be able to take care of him. We got an Honor Guard. Those are usually bastards to deal with. Now, holy hell. Tarkis Ari has some serious defense. And Eb. Eb is Eb. She's just like a spellcaster, it seems. Although has slightly better, well, has a lot better defenses than the Sage Apprentice. But this is just an apprentice. So, uh, they are not hostile. We're probably going to have some conversation here. Let's do it. Right. Yeah. 
Here we go. Really? You aren't voiced? That's kind of surprising. So, you are the vanguard of Kairos' conquest. Not as tall as I imagined, but we can't all choose our executioners. Already, word of our defiance spreads throughout the lands. You're seventh kind of stupid if you think our war ends here. Before you stands Captain Tarkas Ari, de facto leader of the dwindling Vindrian Guard, short, sunburned, and agitated, even when standing still. Her body is a compact sculpture of muscle and bone. Her face is short on symmetry. Thanks to the scars and dents of a dozen brushes with death. Though your lives will certainly end here. Here, in the, in the in Ascension Hall. She chortles, pointing upwards to the ceiling, its stone arcs somehow supporting the massive weight of the spire overhead. Consider yourself truly fortunate. Some of the finest some of the finest rulers of Apex met death by duel in this hollowed hall. Truly, there's no finer place to settle. An intractable feud. An intractable feud. Okay, yeah. Sisters, brothers, Ari looks back to her cadre of soldier for the solemn nod. It has been a privilege to lead, an honor and share in your final days. Taking a deep breath, she turns to you, waiting silently. Hmm. Oh, well, I already know what they are. They hope to gain from their rebellion. Hmm. Seems your uprising amounted to nothing but dead kinsmen. And what did taking Vendrian well cost you? How many disfavored corpses rest in the valley? How many choirmen fell to our blades? It goes. How goes the endless battle of the Blade Grove? What the Blade Grave? While you deal with us here, is that still going on? Well, I guess maybe there's a battle still going on in Stalwart. Ari laughs, wincing as she clutches at her side. Well, her side. And tell me, are the Archons unified in victory? Did the armies bond in camaraderie over our deaths? Our stand here is the first of your problems. How did you know the Archons were feuding? We are hopeless, not witless. Our eyes and ears tell much. Ari, co Ari covers her mouth, stiffing a smile. I will die happily, knowing your invasion will grind to a halt as the two Archons tear each other to pieces over the, over the title of victor. Perhaps my only regret is not living to see which child king will win. If you are so eager to fall on my, to fall on my blade, stop prattling and come at me, or are you as gutless as well? Or are you, or are you gutless as well? Hmm. You bring a lot of magic to fight directly beneath the spire. The spire, rather. I'm trying to bury us at all. Just what sort of inbred fool are you? That's a risk I'm willing to take. The sage to her side emits a nervous cough and glances up with a concerned gaze. After a short moment of hesitation, the sage runs for the exit. Uh. <laughs> okay. Get back here! Ari shouts the fleeing sage, but to, but to no avail. What was I thinking, bringing cowardly scribes to a sword fight? It was right about the lot of you. Sisters, brothers, Ari looks back to her cadre of the soldiers with, with a solemn nod. It, it has been... Okay. Same thing. I guess we might as well, we might as well ask her this. What did you gain a hope from your rebellion? What did you gain to hope? I mean, what would you hope? What would you hope to gain from your rebellion? Nothing that we haven't already gained. Our pride, our dignity. These things you could never take from us. She smiles, her eyes distant for a moment. The Vendrian Guard could never stand all of against all of Kairos' forces. But we can teach the others to resist. 
and maybe run out of soldier before, before we'd run out of stubbornness, but I doubt it. You would consign your whole realm to death because of your pride? And you would kill us for not bowing and you would kill us for not bowing to your banner. I would not let some servile I think it's servile, actually. I will not let some servile bully lecture me on the subject of pride. Any last words? Yes. A broad smile comes over Ari's face. Wow. Tell the voice of Nurat we are most thankful for his aid. We would not have made it this far without his support. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Okay. I should have buffed with food. Damn it. I guess we can do this right now, then. Um... Potion of Revival, Mead. And finally... I guess... Vitality instead of that. Heads up! Okay, there we go. Consumed happening. Welcome. And I guess I'll buff myself with Energy Shield. Barrack should taunt these three. Right. Just so that they're on him. Unlike Fireball, he actually can cast it on the ground. That's interesting. Maybe because it happened instantly. Unless I have a good reason to, well, like, move Lantry, I'm not gonna do it. Um, haste on me is probably the best idea. Okay, Tarkus Ari grazes Barrack, one slashing weapon ineffective. Honor Guard, on the other hand, actually can hurt Barrack. Alright, we are hasted. They're all, I mean, two of them are right next to each other, so let's do it. Do I want to do this without Spell Breach, though? I say yeah. Oh, haste is so good. I'm gonna get in this archer's face, actually, because otherwise he's just gonna shoot Lantern to death. Um... Yeah, I think that's what we do. If I can get in his face and cast that on him, uh, by that I mean touch of atrophy, that should help a bit. <laughs> Lantry, can you heal yourself? Okay, next... We'll have Barrack. Hmm... Let's go for the Honor Guard first. It seems like we have a better chance of actually hitting them. Spectral Blur actually isn't a bad idea either, so let's cast that on Barrack. Uh, we'll omit that from the... Sundered on the archer. I guess we'll do a thrust and then follow that with a follow that up with searing palm. Um, Lantern needs to survive in case anyone goes down, like big time. Um, why does he have two false pits with two different ranges? Okay, I'll need to fix that later then. Titan's touch on him. There we go, spell breaches up. Now to burn him. 
And this should maybe outright kill him in theory. At least I'm hoping it does. I'm getting a bit worried about Lantry here. Yeah, a bit worried. Because that archer... Oh god. I don't know what just happened there. Even if Lantry goes down, which is still not ideal, we should be okay. Ready. Oh god, okay. What? No way. Guardian sacrifice. Oh my god. Okay. So, hold on. Does Tarkus Ari seriously have joint skills as well? Wow, I think he does. Anyways, that's... That was, that was definitely not expected. That crit came in at a really good time, honestly. Uh, let's go ahead and use a potion right now. Nice, Barrack. This thrust should get him down. Good. That's one down. Uh, um. Tarkus Ari is badly injured. I am too, but that's okay. I don't really want to move Barrack right now because that'll actually provoke disengagement strikes. Um. So if we can at least get Tarkus down, I don't know what badly injured means in terms of hit points, but if we can get him down, oh god, don't, don't hit me, yep. now that's some good stuff, I think it is anyways, it might not be, <laughs> who knows, um, I have an idea then, what if we use Iron Tolling? Because I didn't actually know this reduces parry and dodge for 15 seconds. Um, on target. On my command. That might open, uh. up, open him up for a kill. Uh. I just her, rather. Pardon me. Yeah, nice. Still, still just badly wounded. Better than nothing, though. Spell Breach, then Searing Palm. Let's do it. Near death. That should do it. Yes! Target's Ari is down. Now for the Honor Guard. It's deeper than we touch of Atrophy. This weapon is you! Why did I hit... Why did I engage Ebb? That's interesting. I'm apparently drowning. Does that mean I just die in 30 seconds? That better not mean what that means. Be what that means, rather. Useless. Oh, sick. Okay, so it's it's damage over time. Ah! It's not like drowning that I know of. Drowning to be in like Neverwinter Nights or something. This weapon is useless. Oh, then. Wow, honor guard. Um. Hmm. I mean, we have magic to deal with him. Can I not? 
cast spells while drowning? I mean, that would make sense. I want to kill Ed last just because... I don't really know what's gonna happen with her. Oh, there we go. Is that no more drowning? Huh. Nice. So, I mean, Sunder does what again? It reduces their armor, right? Yeah, they, we should be able to hit him. Well, damage her, him. I don't know who it is actually. Um, damage them now. Stand oh, what the F? Hmm, me or yeah, let's let's revive myself. Because I could then use a potion and I'm back in it. Thank you, Barrack. Let's frickin' end this guy now. Right. Ah! Oh goodness. I presume it's Eb who's doing the most damage here. End him. Yes, Sering Palm did it. Fireball. <laughs> she has a lot of health. Touch of atrophy. I mean, that would that would decrease her health at least. <laughs> Hopefully Barrett can make it through this. Oh, can we just use... Okay, whatever. Iron Storm. Apparently Touch of Atrophy can critically hit. That's... Interesting. But apparently it doesn't do much. Different, anyways. You dent. Oh, that's cool. We must rest soon. Oh, yeah. Hey! How'd it go out there? Is everyone dead? Oh, Tark, sorry, survived too. You worthless gnats. We may die, but others may fo well, others will follow our example. Mark my words, the captain coughs up blood. You bested their leadership. Most impressive. Remind me to, remind me to never underestimate the skills of a fate finder. What the F? Why? The third option here is very weird. Like, this seems like if I was a psychopath, I would do this. Like, I don't see why any sane person would actually choose this. Because if I betray, if I betray the disfavored, like, is that mean I'm going to side with the Vendrian Guard? But the way it's worded, it's like... I'm not gonna sign with it. I mean, the way this is the t the way this tone is is I'm gonna betray the um this favored, and then I'm also going to betray the Vendrian Guard and just take Ascension Hall for myself. Also, screwing with the, the Iron Marshal is this seems like a death sentence, so I'm not gonna do that, especially after what just happened. I am honored to have, I am honored to have had, had I'm, I am honored to have had a hand in the glory. 
I gain a double reputation with the disfavored, apparently. It is the disfavored who should be honored. You have been with us from the very start. Well, from the start. To finish off. To finish off. To finish off is what it should be. This long conquest, from the gates of judgment to this, our very moment of victory. Thank you, Cronus, for all that you have given the Legion. Oh, sweet, a cap of precision. Okay. The clatter and madness of combat has finally ceased. Ascension Hall is for a moment tranquil. May Pox take your children. Ari slumps to a crouch, her body trembling from injury and fatigue. With those, with those words of defeat, the burning hum you've heard in your head for days on end ta ta uh, tapers off into nothing. Your mind returns to a state of quiet as you, you have not felt since before you proclaimed the edict upon Vendrian's well. And with that, Kairos' the edict of execution should be no more. You feel tug in your chest as a warm energy begins to form around you. And before you know it, you feel as if you are lighter than air. Yeah, look at those two disfavored soldiers. <laughs> They're just like, um... What just happened? I think we took the iron mark. I, the, the, uh, yeah, I think en Enrios came with us too. That's so good though. They're like, uh... Did you see that? Hello? Oh, the Iron Marshal is here. Still folding your arms as if like, it's like, ah, oh, whatever, I don't know. You blink away the last of the luminescent trails, the last of luminescent trails in your field of vision. The masonry of Ascension Hall is replaced with a wide open space in every direction, save for the, slab, save for the slab of ancient stone spire beneath your feet. High winds shove you, pushing you off balance. The air is cool and thin, unsatisfying to your lungs. Is this? Lantry looks out to the horizon, eyes wide with excitement. Yes, this must be the mountain spire. When was the last time? When was the last time? Lantry's eyes look over the ledge, dumbstruck by the vertical plunge. Lantry backs away from the from the edge. I may need to retch. Kairos, be merciful. What now? Beric spins around his feet, looking around, trying to take in as much as he can through the narrow visor of his helmet. Every way you look, mountains rise up along the distant horizon. The rivers and forests below bring to mind maps of the Vendrian's well, and you quickly trace the Matani, the Irinev, and all the numerous waterways of the region. Higher than you imagined it, this is indeed the pinnacle of the spire at Vendrian's well. How did we get all the way up here? Ari strains to stand up, clutching to her, clutching her side. Interesting. Another question? How in the name of Graven Ash do we get down? The Iron Marshal walks to the edge, walks to the edge, trembling a half pace back as she peers downwards. The warriors below must be sensing that the edict has ended. We should be down there, by their side. The edict is gone, and I'd the edict is gone, and I don't I don't think we're dead. We could all feel the edict passing. No doubt the soldiers below are sensing it too, and the Archons as well. Enough bloodshed for one day. I demand all blades sheathed. That sounds much, that much sounds sensible at least. If we're to understand what just happened, we need to drop anchor on this battle and regroup. But what of the chorus? We just can't... The Iron Marshal holds up her hand, lowering her head. You were right. We should regroup. Save what warriors we can. The chorus is better handled when we are at full strength. Send word to Graven Ash that we are successful. Why would I say that when we're in the middle of nowhere? 
That was a worthy battle. Not since stalwart have I seen such courage, such determination. Oh, but the siege you ne oh, but the siege needed you spans ago. Agreed. And I would be honored to deliver and I would be honored to deliver your auspicious message in person, but she points down over the ledge. Yeah, see, she's sensible. I love how her portrait is actually pointing to. What? Wow. The second option is terrible. We hand her a note the parchment will survive the impact. That basically means we throw her off. No, sorry, I'm not doing that. But I mean, it's good to know that you could be that cruel in this game. But really, my qu I mean, I'm sorry to break character here for a moment, but my, my, my question about this game is, can you go against the norm and not be that cruel? So far, I've been satisfied, and I'd say yeah. But yeah, let's see. I think the blast of magic from the spire on the Edict's End should have been clear to everyone. But Grave and Ash will want to know that you are safe. Go through that portal and report to Grave and Ash, then, re then return to me with any news. No telling how stable it is, but look closely and you'll see images of Ascension Hall in the haze. Well, if you train dice, that is. Of course, even, even if it's not stable, the alternative is jumping. So, what do we have to lose? Oh, how did I not notice that? The portal's shimmering contours... The portal's shimmering contours glimmer the moment you call it its presence. Assuming this takes me back to Ascension Hall, I'll carve a path to Ash and let him know the score. With her sounding clatter and Rios. Uh... Is it Arrhenius? Arrhenios. Arrhenos? And why have I said Enrios? Um, Arrhenios. I'm going to say Arrhenios. Arrhenios beats her breastplate in salute. Glory to Kairos. Um, send the Archon of War my regards. Thank you for being the edge of our blade. We've been shorthanded even since we took the Gates of Judgment, and these Oathbreakers fight well above their station. Without you and my vanguard, this would have been a bloodier day, and there's no telling if we would have seized the a seized Ascension Hall in time. You had six days, or five days even. Vendrian's well is yours. Hold it for the glory of Tunan. It would be wise for us to place court held place court held lands between us and the enemy. That way the chorus cannot fortify around us without giving offense to the Archon of Justice. Nerat's treachery means war. I trust we will be able to rely on your continued support in the coming trials. Oh, hi. I, I totally forgot about you. No, no doubt, I'm the very definition of an enemy to the Overlord. Of the Overlord. I didn't just resist, I let others into resistance. So I know what's about to happen. But I know when I've met my match, and, and like most folk, I'll do whatever it takes to live. If you show me mercy, if you will show me mercy, I pledge my I will pledge my life to you, the good faith finder. The tide cast the tide cast the tide caster bows on one knee, lowering her gaze. I know I'm an oathbreaker, so my word isn't what it used to be, but I promise if you spare me, I will serve you well. Uh why would I possibly trust you? Because I'm out of reason to fight you. The venturing guard and the school of tides are no more, leaving me with no loyalties with no loyalties or ties to. Well, anyone. And we must all bow to Kairos' minions eventually, right? I would die before swearing fealty to the new to sw swearing fealty to, to the voices of Narat. I mean voice of Narat, rather. And Grave and Ash would kill me in a heartbeat. If I'm to serve anyone in this new order, 
It should and must be the Archon of Justice. And you are the only Serpent of Tunon I could think to ask. All right, serve me well and all can be forgiven. Yeah? Hmm. I'm thinking about how we should actually handle this. I'm not gonna execute her, so that's out. I don't wanna doubt her, really. If I let you live, I'll regret it, won't I? My fighting days are over. If you let me go, I'm gone. Gone from this battle. Gone from the gone from the tears. I'll never harm another servant of Kairos for the rest of my hermit life. Well, my mercy has a price. What will stay your hand if not my service? Is it wealth you desire? I have plenty stashed throughout the tears. I can lead you to it. Then swear fealty to me. I, Ebb of the, I, Ebb of the Tidecasters, do hereby pledge my life and loyalty to Krendus. She dips in a short bow before meeting your eyes with a trembling smile. I will serve and obey until such time as I am freed from, freed from my obligations. Okay. Sweet. Welcome aboard. Mm. No narration, okay. Vendrian's wall has fallen. For the second time since the conquest began, Kairos' armies take the citadel from its defenders. With your help, the Vendrian Guard Rebellion has been crushed. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. With your help, the Ventrian Guard Rebellion has been crushed. You claimed Ascension Hall with your disfavored, al with your disfavored allies, satisfying the terms of Kairos' baleful, baleful edict. You and the forces of Kairos are free from the Overlord's death sentence. What? Yikes. With the threat of execution no longer looming overhead, the Overlord's armies have, have turned their attention away from the Citadel and towards each other. The, the tensions that flared over the long siege reached an explosive crescendo as the disfavored and, and, the and the Scarlet Armies, I mean the Scarlet Chorus Armies, clashed iron and bronze in a hasty, disorganized battle. That was fast. As his forces were cut down, the voice of Narat and his officers escaped, and escaped, to the stone, the escaped to the Stone Sea, leaving the conscript army to carry on their battle against the disfavored. Yikes, poor, poor chorus. In the aftermath, the, the disfavored broke camp and, wit and withdrew to their fortress in the Blade Grave, there to regroup and prepare for the extended, the extended campaign against the Scarlet Chorus. Having taken Ventrine well for yourself, Archon, Grave, and Ash recognize your lawful claim to rule and occupy the spire. As the days passed, the wounded and injured were nursed to health. As you explored your, as you, as you, ex oh, but you explored your strange fashion and planned your next steps to, with careful deliberation. As word spread that the scar, as the scar, bleh. As word spreads that the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavor turn on each other, factions once resolved to bend, to bend the knee are armspired to instead continue fighting. The Archon's feud has heralded the collapse of Kairos' offensive. Tunan, the Archon of Justice, observes the chaos and discord spreading across the land. 
The Archon summons his fate minor to return to the court at the Bastard City and report on her actions in, in Vengeance Well. I'm... Does this say important, really? Oh, improved, okay. I love how, you know, Verse is the image here, except Verse is gone, so this isn't really relevant to us. Let's see. The power you gained by ending Kairos' edict on the Benjamin as well can be channeled into your combos with your companions. Heck yeah. Alright, that, that's interesting. Civil War. What a shame that has descended to this. Archon Ash will want to meet and discuss the next steps. Best that you regroup in Iron Hearth. Gather your strength and regroup, but don't leave the Archon waiting. Send Ash my regards. The General's done much for me, and I wish that he was here to see this. Hmm. Tell Ash I will join him in due time. Well, the other option isn't really that much better. It says I, I, both of them are, I'm going to keep them waiting, so I don't know. The general is a patient man, but we're in the thick of two wars. I doubt he'll thank me for the message. See you in Ironhearth. Yeah, see you in Ironhearth too, lady. The dizzying energy from the spire falters. Whatever force awoke in the powers that reside here gutters and fades. Though a faint, though a faint hymn persists in the sculpture of the center. Oh, <laughs> you're still here. That's odd. There was a portal here a moment ago, but it seems to have vanished. Uh, look around for a solution. That always works in real life too. The humming from the cautious, from the curious uh, sculpture pulses, pul pulses and builds in volume, as if to draw your attention. Hi. Are you content to wander about looking for, looking for conversation? Because some of us want to head down to rejoin the troops. There's a war going on and we're missing it. I won't rest until the teleporter gets working again. I suggest you do the same. I take you to have questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, tell me about yourself. <laughs> she blinks at you and shakes her head. Fate binder, I'm the lieutenant who's gonna start kicking people off the spire if I don't see the teleporter flicker to life. Now it's not the time for me to. Now it's not the time for me to rattle, rattle off accomplishments and hope for the future. Save it for after the war. Uh, how will, how do you think Ash will respond to the civil war? With tact and coordination, coordination rather. The voices of Narat is a chaotic, emotional, and baseless creature. Graven Ash is going to dismantle the Scarlet Chorus and wipe its leader from the face of Teratus. Count on it. Okay. Well, Eb's here now. Can't do that. What's over here, first of all? Anything? Sorry, I can't. We have something here. The fire pit burns with embers that give off an ethereal glow. Looking at the flame, you can, you can, you feel you can see glimpses of distorted faces. That's creepy. Oh, what? To the east, you can see deep ashen clouds surrounding the burning, li the burning library. Okay, let's just go in here then. On closer inspection, a series of uh, symbols carved around the base of the structure come to view. One symbol pulses with a blue-white glow. The pattern resembles the glowing lines of light seen on the floor of Ascension Hall moments before you found yourself transported above the clouds. As you stare at the symbol, at the symbol, the chill of the wind abates and your chest swells with warmth. The air finally feels welcoming. Your 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 lungs sated at least, while well, it last. I'd be careful going any closer. The whole tower is humming with energies that we don't know, that we don't understand. Lantry holds its quill poised above a sheet of parchment with anticipation. Now, I didn't say back away. Let's let's find out what it does. Just be cautious. I can feel power running through this place. Eb surveys the surroundings, her gaze sweeping to the object at the center. You can sense the magic from the spire, even from down below. But up here, 
this close to the, to the axis of the spire, d the deluge of energy is numbing. I feel dizzy. Do you feel dizzy? Beric massages the brow of his helmet, causing a howl of grinding to echo across the expanse. Uh, what is this thing? The surface of the orb trembles at your words. For a, for a brief moment, the rocks, the solid rock undulates. The same motion as a quiet pond rippled by rain. An echo bounces back from afar. Your voice is distorted, unfamiliar. Is this thing? Your voice. For a moment there, it sounded like song. Oh, that mean okay, that's... <laughs> The structure, is, I mean, the sculpture is once again still. There is a rush warmth throughout your, through your body, a jolt of inner, well, innervation that steadies your balance, a barrage of tact, uh, tactile, tactile sensations flood your mind as you feel footsteps in wind, but not on your face or your limbs. A moment later, the flood information begins to make sense. You feel the wind against the spire, and even, and even the weight of your own feet, as if the spire were a second spine. With this connection made, you feel your awareness pull from this place, not, not as a traveler, but as one glimpsing from, glimpsing the world from impossibly far away. In this moment, there is nothing you cannot see, though you see it nearly all at once in a flood of sensation that is, dis that is difficult to parse. You see a spire in the crossing of an ancient stone structure, two walls extending off the distance. At the base of this internal spire, settlers and merchants act in every way uns unconcerned toiling under the observation of unforgiving taskmasters. As the shadow of the spire falls over them, the mood changes. The settlers pause in shared unease and look up in the sky toward you. Some of the faces looked at you. Some of the faces looking at you are familiar and you recognize this place as Lethian's Crossing where you served during the war. Near the settlement built at the joining of ancient walls, you see a breach in the massive masonry, a cleft in the forbidden hidden realm within the old walls. Um, uh, let's go toward the old wall's entrance, I guess. Shadows envelop you, muting all sound and vision with slight delay. There's a feeling of per uh, perversion, of wrongness. Whatever arcane power is allowing your senses to drift free of your body seems to falter in place. Figures haunt the stone walls, drifting emanations of claw, uh, claw, claw and fang. They pay you no heed, but you fear them all the same. In the depths of this forbidden place, the deepest chamber is bathed in light. An, an arcane symbol illuminates the floor, though the details hurt your eyes when you focus. With a gentle tug, your focus pulls back to a new horizon, though it takes you a moment to recognize it as Benjamin as well. You return to the awareness of your immediate surroundings. The effect leaves you unsteady on your feet. The spire feels similar to the one you now occupy. Though instead of, radiating, instead of radiating arcane life, it reeks of dust and crumbling stone. A branch withering once pulled from its tree, it reaches for you with a barely perceivable tug or perceptal. The, the link between you and the spire recedes. The arcane bond is still present, but the mystical energies for the moment are quiet. Your body flooded with excitement and fatigue. It's unclear whether the mystic connection is strengthening you or siphoning. The tower offers nothing by the way of an answer, and you know that asking would only yield more silence and mystery. The deluge of sensation is over, but the positions of other spires still linger in your mind. From your vantage point atop the mountain spire, you can easily spot the mysterious structures, each of them rising high above their distant surroundings. Okay. Did you see? Did you sense that? Lantry signs a long sigil of air, in the air rather, squinting at you as he works his cantrip. The ripples are everywhere. When you move, the magic of this place stirs and churns. That portal over there, those burning braziers, they all glow more tense as you approach. I think it's responding to your presence. Hate to interrupt at the wool. Hate to interrupt the wool gathering, but you did just resolve one of Kyra's edicts, which is at least as remarkable as the setting a spire. Am I the only one who thinks that? Am I the only one who thinks they might be related? Barry plants his feet and crosses his arms. 
As the lawful holder of the spire, it is your duty to find out as much as possible. That includes understanding the edicts as well. If you forget your responsibilities, I'll be only too happy to remind you. Be sure to see me after your audience with Tunan. We cannot let the Scarlet Chorus gain hold on the tears. Together, we will wipe them from the land. Come to me Come to me as soon as you can, Fatebinder. We have a lot of work to do. Okay. Is anything else happening here now? Shedding Spire, Lethian's Crossing. That means there must be a spire near the burning library as well. Considering, yeah, there's a um, point of interest that goes that way. We'll see, though. Whoa. Okay, what's in Ascension Hall? 